it's early morning. Matt and I are trying to get a, a jump start on our day here in the mountains of southern Appalachia. We know rain's coming. It's way back in Tennessee right now, but we're going to try to get everything that we can do done this morning. So you can hear a weed eater in the background. Matt's weed eating. I'm going to do some weed eating. And then hopefully we're going to be able today to put some of the infrastructure up for our new raised garden beds. I want to put some um, cattle panels like these you see behind me. I want to put some of those up there so that I can grow beans or peas or whatever uh, in some of those raised beds that we put on the bank. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to, we're going to beat the rain and at least get some stuff done. So we got the weed eating done, almost all of it. We saved the dreaded chore for last. And of course, Matt's gonna do it. He's not gonna make me do it. But the greenhouse is now totally empty of our plant starts, the ones we started and the ones we bought from Satterfields. We finally got all those planted. But what happens inside there, because we don't have a weed barrier or gravel or anything, is that weeds grow inside the greenhouse. Well, usually we keep them every time we weed eat. Matt weed eats it and that keeps them at bay. Last year, we really let it get away from us. It was just so hot. Like a couple of times I said, oh, don't worry about it, Matt. Just leave it. I just hated for him to get in there because it's hot inside. But what happened is, of course, they just kept growing and they grew and they grew. And especially up alongside the walls, they just... It, it didn't really hurt anything, didn't damage the, as far as um, tearing the plastic or anything, but it just let, got it all dirty. So then sunlight can't come through as good. So anyway, we washed the outside. You can't do anything about that. Like right now, I can see there's a layer of pollen all the way across it. So this earlier in one video, if you watch all our videos, you'll remember we washed the outside, but you can't really, the way the inside is, it's much harder. And especially if you just keep it weed eat, it's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to try to do better at that this year. And we could put down a weed barrier, but we just never have. And one of the reasons is, well, two reasons. One is the expense and the time. But the other reason is I've had so many people tell me that they used weed barrier. And what happens is over time it breaks apart, it deteriorates, and it leaves little bitty tiny pieces everywhere. So for me and Matt, we'd like pieces or the weeds. We'll just keep the weeds. It would help though to put down a layer of mulch or um, gravel or something like that. But again, we just we had just ain't never got it done. Maybe we will someday. Maybe in our old age, Matt. Right? Better hurry. <laughs> I better hurry. Not there. Yeah, but at least we're going to keep the weeds down this year. So the next chore we're going to tackle, Matt's going to tackle, I'm just going to assist. I'm his gopher to hold and go get whatever, whatever he needs, is to stake our peppers. Most of them are standing up pretty good right now, about, you know, that tall or something. You can see them here in a minute, I'll show you. But there is one that's already fell over, and all those that are standing up, as they begin to produce and grow larger, they will also fall over. So we're going to go ahead and, and get that chore done. Matt's bought some steaks. Sometimes over the years we've bought steaks. Uh, we save them and use them again if we can. But lots of times Matt has just went into the woods and cut little branches, little, what do you call them, branches, I guess? Saplings. Saplings and then you cut them and then use them. And that works good too and, it's, and saves you some money if you want to do it that way. And then we use, uh, what is it, Matt, seagrass? Yeah, seagrass, twine. seagrass twine is what we use to, to tie them up. And usually that works works really well, even when uh, you may have to do some adjusting as the pepper grows up, and then especially if it gets loaded with peppers and kind of kind of starts hanging over. But it it works, doesn't it, Matt? This is the one that's laid over. Matt's saying somehow it got a little out of line, and I think that's because I planted it. <laughs> so I got it out of the, out of the neat line it was in. You can see it's got some little little peppers on it. Let's see what kind that was. A shishito. I'll let Matt get it tied up first before I put this back.
So what kind of knife are you using today? People will be wanting to know. Uh, that is a, I think a Tarava brand. Tarava. It's, it is a, gosh, I don't even know where it kind of come from somewhere overseas. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. Well, you like it? Yeah. Matt pretty much has got knives. He could he could wear them, change them with his outfits, like a pair of shoes or something, or a pair of earrings or whatever. <laughs> Don't you? A good knife is indispensable. Yeah. Don't go nowhere without a good knife. No, you always have a knife. I guess you're going to use one of your little handy dandy knots on this. Yeah, it's just a little loop. Peppers are looking really good, but once it this heat the heat continues to get in here and long hot days, that's what they love. Uh -huh. Glad they like it because I don't. No, I don't like it. We've had some cool days this week. It's pretty cool today. I like it when them little bitty hard little balls of snow is blowing sideways and hit you in the face. Oh, yeah. That's what I like. Then hard frosty mornings. Can't grow peppers and tomatoes then. Well, you can go down in the basement and get them out of a jar. Oh, wow. Well. Next to the wood stove. That's what I like. Okay, one down. Several more to go right here. And then over in this other bed, we have several, several more to go. This one right here has got a lot of peppers on it you can see this is the golden uh, Marcon marconi so they'll get pretty big they're not i mean you could eat them now but they'll be better i'm not doing very good with the camera here but they'll do better when um i mean they'll taste better when they get bigger and get that beautiful golden color but you could i mean you know if you wanted a pepper you could certainly eat it now I'm really loving the marigolds that we planted in front of the cabbage here. In between the marigolds and the cabbage, we'll probably put okri, one long row of okri down through there. And of course, in the back there with our cattle panels is where we'll put beans. And Matt wants to mostly plant rattlesnake beans this year. There are several varieties that I got from Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply that I want to plant. And I, maybe we can find a place to put at least a few greasy beans because I really love them. I'm not sure we'll plant the peanut beans. Matt didn't like having to bend over and pick them. And I, since I want to try those other varieties, if they do well, we probably likely wouldn't need the extra peanut beans anyway. And then down here last year where we planted some kind of experimental beans, there was one of those that I, Matt loved, and it was really prolific, so I hope we can find a place to put at least a few of them. In between my row of uh, marigolds, I went ahead and planted some other marigolds, and you can see they're up. That was just some seed that I had that I'd saved. So these were the ones, all these others we got from Satterfields. They're really pretty. This will just be like the orange, kind of orange rust colored ones, but they'll be nice here too. And they'll fill in this row, which I think will be, will be especially pretty by summer's end. Matt got all the pepper staked. Some of them were too small to tie up, but once they reach that height where they need something to hold on to, the stakes will be there. So that's great. Our next project is going to be to put the cattle panel to those uh, raised beds on the bank that you can see there. That's where I hope to grow some beans and some peas. Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply shared so many wonderful varieties with us that I'm, I'm just so excited to plant them. And if you've never been there, you should definitely, definitely check it out. I'll put the link in the description below so you can, you can do that. If you live in Western North Carolina, it's definitely worth the drive to go visit with her and, and see the wonderful things that she has there and learn some of the wonderful history. Anyway, Matt thinks that he's going to put, you can see he's got some of the T-posts laid out. He's going to put 
uh, T-post at each end, one in the middle. Probably use two panels and let them overlap there in the middle, um, just where they naturally would overlap, and that'll be okay. Might even be able to, right there in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the middle of the beds, I might put a little pot there and even put something in it and let it grow up the, up the panel, since that'll be a good place. Katie did plant some of her wildflowers there in front, and they're already up. Little seedlings are already growing, so that's that'll be nice and pretty. Inside those beds, I put some tomatoes and some peppers that I just we just we give some away. We shared, of course, with Granny, shared with Corey, and I just couldn't bear to throw them away. So I thought, well, I'll put them in there, and maybe we can make that work with them growing with the beans or peas that we put. And then the kind of the biggest plant in the one on the right. <laughs> that is a potato. I did not plant it there, but I'm guessing that I, some of the compost we used up there had potato peels in it, and it's growing a potato. If you didn't know that, you can sometimes grow potatoes from peelings. It, they don't work as well as if you have seed potatoes, but sometimes they do produ produce potatoes. Granny likes to save hers, and she'll plant them in a in her, the edge of her flower bed or in the edge of the garden and just see what happens. And you might get a little, little few little taters to grab a out and eat. This is our spring garden down here. And you see my carrots are about a foot tall almost. You can see a lot of my radishes have gone to seed. That was kind of radishes that didn't actually develop on the end. And I just hadn't pulled them up yet. We've ate most all of the ones that actually produced a, a radish. And then you can see my massive weed pile here with a tree growing up in the middle of it. It looks like a walnut tree. So I've just not had time to get down here and weed this and it needs to all the daffodils, the early spring flowers needs to be cut back. So that's on my list of things to do. I just haven't got it done yet. You can see right here behind the kale and the spinach is growing these really pretty yellow flowers. Now I don't know the exact name of them. A friend that I used to work for, worked some in her yard, gave them to me years ago. I've heard them called sun drops. It seems like I've heard them called something else. You'll have to tell me what you know, what you know them as. And they're really prolific and they bloom for a pretty good while. And of course they're a beautiful, beautiful yellow color. I'm still really pleased with how this little part in front of the greenhouse looks. You can see our calendulas finally opened up and blooming. The petunias back there are still blooming like crazy. I've gotten some nasturtiums and the herbs are doing good. This is catnip, it's growing like crazy. This is some catnip Corey and I started way back in late winter and it's finally doing good. I just put the seeds in there and set it outside. Here's another little uh, lantana from Satterfields. And then Corey got me some, these, they look like they're real heavy, but they're light. They're kind of metal made to look like ceramic. She got me three of them for Mother's Day. So in this one, you can see I repotted. I had some aloe inside the house that was getting way too big for the little pot it was in. So I repotted it, the biggest one, and then I stuck one of the baby ones right there. But in this one, I planted some black-eyed Susan vine. It's a really pretty, pretty little vine that usually does pretty good for me. So I was hoping it would grow in this and kind of weave out around all the other flowers that are back here. We'll see if that happens or not. Then over on this side, again, everything's doing good. I love how the coleus and the, I can't ever remember, that's the scopia, this green and white. I love how it looks together, really pretty. My nasturtiums are growing. Um, here's one of the, here's the biggest aloe plant that I had. So I've repotted it again in one of those that, that Corey got me for Mother's Day. And this is some mint. I can't remember exactly what kind it is. 
I'll have to ask Corey. Oh, no, there's me. This thing I was going to say. Surely I marked it. I'm trying to do better. That's strawberry mint. Yeah. Strawberry mint from the Satterfields. Corey and Katie's been making some tea out of some of it. And then back here in this pot, this is where the azalea was sitting, but I got Matt to help me plant it earlier today. So it's now in the ground back there where we kind of sit and have some of our popsicle talks. So I planted some more calendula in this one, but it's a different color. It's a pink calendula. I grew it last year and it was really pretty. So I hope, hope it'll sprout up and do good here for us too. And it'll add some pink to this part of the little greenhouse corner. So this is the third, I guess this is the medium sized one that Corey got me, you can see. And this is a petunia that I got, they give to mothers at church. So I planted it in there. And I also in the front planted one or two of those black eyed Susan vines to see if I thought that would be really pretty with the pink, if it grows. And if it doesn't, the petunia will be really pretty. And then beside it is some comfrey that I should have already put out into the ground that I have not. And then some chocolate mint from the Satterfields. And you can see it's really, really growing. Got you one, another one that's, what'd you call it, lung shot or something? Blood shot. Um, Pineapple is good. Want to taste? Okay. Mm. Grapes is your favorite, huh? Yeah, I like grape. I like grape knee highs, too. Mm. You know how long it's been since I've had one of those? I hadn't had a knee high in literal years. And when we had the mass uh, general book cookbook signing in Hendersonville, they were so kind, the people in Waynesville were so kind too, and they asked us if we wanted anything, and they did bring us water, asked us if we wanted anything else, but we said no. But in Hendersonville, she's like, are you sure? And I said, when she asked, I said, no, we're good. I've, I've got some water. We don't really need anything else. And she said, are you sure? Because I could bring you a knee-high and some popcorn. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll take a knee-high. She said, what flavor? I said, peach. And oh my goodness, it was good. You ate some popcorn too, didn't you? I did, I ate popcorn too. <laughs> I like popcorn. Mm. It was so good. So good. What do you call them? Belly washer? Knee high belly washers. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, they're good. So thankfully we managed to get everything done before the rain got here. Now the sun's come out, but it's got a lot of clouds. Is it supposed to be stormy when it rains? Nah. Don't or just so. rain. It's just a big water rain coming. It'll be here wow. shortly. One, twelve, one, two, something like that. Mm. So at least we we want to get everything in place. What our hope is, what we hope we can do, is that uh, one day next week Matt's going to take off work on one of the good sign days, and hopefully we're going to plant the whole garden. That's what that's our what we're hoping. We're not sure that'll. That's how it'll work, but that's what we're aiming for anyway. So if, as long as we've got everything, and we have, I think, Matt plowed last weekend while I was gone, tilled up the garden in front again. So we should be ready just to plant it all, right? We've got to get it in the ground. We're late. I know, we're late. So. We'll get our plan if we have to do it tonight. Yeah, there was one other thing <coughs> we were going to do today. Oh, no. that I just thought of. It was to go plant the rest of Granny's. We've already planted her some tomatoes and peppers and stuff, but to go plant, basically to plant the rest of hers is just one or two mounds of squash or whatever, and her cornfield beans and peas. So it wouldn't take long. Or we could wait for the good planting day too for that. Whatever you wanna do. Mm. You're the foreman. Yeah. You're the work hand. <coughs> I'm the mule. Mm. It's amazing how everything has grown, but like Matt said, we're kind of behind where we normally would be this time of the year. About two and 
a half, three weeks later than usual. We've got which little, is late. There's some little tomatoes, lots of tomato bloom. There's lots of little peppers. The potatoes look great. Our onions and spinach and stuff still doing good. Radishes are gone, basically. What else good. is there? Yeah, I might not like radishes. I'm the one that likes them. Me and Miss Cindy and Granny. They ain't much out of the garden I don't like, but I don't like those. Mm -hmm. Never have. It's weird, because I like... There ain't much food in general I don't like, mm -hmm. but I just don't like those. So you can have all of them. Well, thank you. A lot of people in the last our last garden video was asking, well, how do you keep the animals out of your gardens? Well, we've been really lucky that we've never had to worry about that much. In our mountain holler here, there are several dogs that just are free to roam where they roam. And so I think that helps, don't you? Keep some, keeps yeah. the animals, whether it's rabbits or groundhogs or deer, mm -hmm. keeps them pushed out because those dogs are just kind of roaming around all the time and, and they would chase any of that. Yeah. So that helps. And uh, so we've never had to worry about it. Until last fall, last fall, our fall garden got mowed down by deer pretty much in one night. Of course, fall garden, you don't have as much growing, but, and I was just devastated. We were so upset. I was more upset than Matt, but, uh, but still, dis very disappointing. So I can't imagine if you, people that fight that all the time. So I was really paranoid this spring, thinking, well, this will be it. I'll have to battle them. Uh, you know, the every now they'll just be here the whole time. So my first thing I started watching was when the hostas started coming out of the ground, and every day I just expected them all to be gone. Well, they weren't. Then I planted all the spring stuff again, expecting overnight one night it'll all be gone. But they've not been back. They've not bothered anything. I'm not saying they won't come back. They likely will. But Matt was explaining to me, he knows way more about deer than I do, probably why they've not come back yet. And you can share that with us, with them. It's because they're right now fixing to start fawning. And they're just kind of, the does are kind of reclusive. And and once they do have their fawns, they'll be, they keep them kind of hid away for a little while until they can get up and going and moving real good on their own. And then they'll probably bring them around and, I don't know, maybe, maybe they, they got enough in the woods right now to eat, so maybe they won't bother the garden. They never have. No. And there's been deer around here for oh, many for years. years right. And they've never eaten our garden until last fall. They mm -hmm. eat a little bit of the fall garden, but it could have been that um, just a different year in the woods, they didn't have a whole lot to eat. Mm -hmm. maybe. maybe the acorns were not as prolific. I don't know. They And they weren't really. There wasn't that many acorns right here so that might have had something to do with it but right now they're just they're real close to starting to have their fawns so they're not they're just not around much and then once they do have them they'll they'll keep them hid for a little while until they get big enough where they can get about on their own and can escape and that sort of thing and it was does and fawns yeah that's all it was last year mm -hmm. that was in the yard it was does and, and the year before was fawns um, so, yeah, Matt used his trail cam to get shots of them. It was, was it three, I think? Mm -hmm. um, we have some deterrent. We hadn't actually, because of all of our, like Matt's saying about being behind planting the garden, we've also been behind. We've not done any of that. And then thankfully, we've not really had to, but we will. And we may, you know any day now be really disappointed to wake <laughs> up and see what they've eaten but yeah. so far so good on that front but i really feel for people i've had so many people tell me that and they even live like in a really suburb like a really crowded area and they they just give up they can't have a garden they can't have flowers they can't have anything because anything they put out overnight it's gone and that would be so discouraging that would be really discouraging mm -hmm. I can't imagine after doing all that hard work to have to go through that. Right. Also discouraging for groundhogs, they can really tear up your garden. Mm -hmm. And rabbits and squirrels.
but thankfully we don't have have problems with those mm -hmm. thanks to I think it's the dogs <clears throat> would be my best guess we did have a squirrel that, that a couple of years ago that ate all our apples yeah and I've never seen a squirrel eat apples it was um, this was what well, it's been five or six years ago now and I was sick I was sick that year a lot and I um, didn't really found out that I had cystitis but going through all that the doctors couldn't really figure out what it was and I literally well I didn't get off the couch pretty much for three weeks yeah and during that time of course there was nothing to I couldn't do anything outside Matt was still having to work full-time and do things around the house and do what needed to be done cook for me take me back and forth to doctor's appointments and all that and anyway we just kind of had to let what was in the yard go when I first finally began to feel like getting back outside, uh, I was I went out and I looked was looking around and I was like, because I knew at the beginning of the summer I had apple trees full of apples. I was like, hey, <laughs> where's all my apples? What happened to them? And Matt was like sheepishly like, well, there's a squirrel that's been <laughs> eating them. And you could even show me over here there was a where they had run with the apples it's probably more than one squirrel but it they was. had dropped it and it had lodged in the crotch of a tree mm. so you could see one of my apples over there in the tree i was like you let squirrels eat my apples but matt was like well i've been kind of busy you know and i was <laughs> like well that's true you have been taking care of me so that's really the only time they've ever ever bothered anything and it might be, but we were, like, that year, typically we're out here all the time, in and out and in and out and in and out, but that year we weren't. So that might have been, too, the squirrels might have been like, well, it's really quiet. Let's <clears throat> get some apples. And it could be, too, like what you're saying, that was a year they didn't have much to eat, so they mm -hmm. were like, there's some apples. Yeah, we'll I get also, the apples. I also took care of the squirrels, too, yeah, when, you, once, it was, yeah, once I was able to get them. Once you were added. able, yeah. And we've not had that problem since. No. No, and thankfully I got better, so figured out when I figured out, or the doctor figured out, got to the right doctor who told me what he thought it was, and I immediately quit uh, eating the foods and drinking the things like coffee that was hurting me, drinking straight cranberry juice because I was trying to help my help myself, and that was just like putting gasoline on a fire. Yeah. Uh, I immediately began to get better and got better from all that, so... Yeah, but now you can't have coffee. Mm -mm. I don't even miss it anymore. Boy, I did in the oh, beginning, God, though. Yeah. I missed it God. so bad. I only drank coffee in the morning, and I missed it so terrible. And um, Miss Cindy felt sorry for me. A lot of it is you miss the taste and if you caffeine, you know, and all that. But, too, the, just that habit of every morning you get up and get something hot to drink. And so she, we tried different things. Like, I don't like hot tea. Matt and Corey and Katie do. Miss Cindy loves it. I think it tastes like a barn stall. I have, no matter what kind it is, I don't like it. So finally, I just kind of give up. And then Miss Cindy said, I remember my, uh, and she got me some like, that's what I was gonna say, some like uh, low acidic coffee and stuff. But I was afraid to even try that, afraid it would hurt me. So she said, I remember my grandparents used to drink Postum postum was created in like around world war ii time i don't know at what point during the war because coffee was rationed so people was looking for something else to drink when they couldn't get coffee so that's when postum was created and it's it's made from wheat like a roasted wheat so if you're if you have to stay away from wheat you couldn't enjoy it but anyway she said i remember my grandparents used to drink that i'm going to get some of it and we'll see if you like it well i did and it's not it's not coffee and it's not really hot chocolate. It's somewhere in the middle of that. But I started drinking it, and I'm, I'm still drinking it all these years later. So mm -hmm. I really like my postum now. I don't know that I could go back to my coffee. But Matt drinks it. He <coughs> drinks enough for both of us. Oh, I like it. Yeah. He's like Pap. He drinks it all the time. I don't drink it a whole lot during the day, but I drink I drink a pot full in the morning. Sometimes you do. Occasionally I'll yeah, drink it. Sometimes I see you with a cup of coffee. But I enjoy it. Yeah. It's one of life's little simple pleasures. Yeah. I enjoy it. I, I don't like it when it's hot. I enjoyed it too, but not when it made me lay on the couch for three yeah. weeks. I mean, I don't it like hurt. it. I don't drink it much when it's hot out. Yeah. Except in the morning. Yeah. But in the wintertime, I'll drink it periodically throughout the day. 
And Matt drinks his black, of course. Mm -hmm. I put cream in mine. I liked cream. And I put cream in my postum, too. I like it black and yeah. blistering hot. I like it with a sausage biscuit, too. Yeah. <laughs> or biscuits and yeah. gravy. I didn't make no sausage biscuits for Matt this morning because we were in too big of a hurry. I, we were, I was going to, that's what I was planned on. And then Matt said, you know, the rain's coming. And I said, well, does that mean I should curtail breakfast to an egg sandwich? He said, yes. So that's all you got today, egg so, sandwich. We got all the work done, that's all that matters. Yeah. Oh, and I was going to tell about what we're sitting on. So we're on a, this was my Mother's Day present from Matt. Really nice. I really love it. He's couldn't, he of course didn't tell me what it was or wouldn't tell me nothing about it. But he said, I've put it out in the yard and covered it up so you can't see it. Because I had to put it together. And I was thinking, what in the world? <laughs> what? Because I thought, well, maybe it's some kind of another bed to plant stuff in. But then I thought, well, he wouldn't have put it. And when I looked out the window, I could see where it was covered up was right here. I thought, well, he wouldn't have put it way out there if it was a bed. What could it be? And so, very nice present. Mm -hmm. Should get up and show it. Yeah, we could get up and show it. Yeah. So, very nice and glides. Old timey. Old timey, it yeah. It looks old timey. Yeah. That's what kind of furniture used to be in Grandpa's yard and Great Grandpa's yeah. yard when I was a little boy. Yeah, there was one. It was wider than this, but one on my Granny Gazzy's porch. Mm -hmm. And so you could sit there and glide, rock mm -hmm. on it. This is a new one. It's not a vintage one, but it's nice. Yeah. I like it. Very nice. So I said that was a very, very nice present. I was totally surprised. I would have never dreamed this, but I like it a lot. Well, I didn't go looking for it. I just stumbled upon it and said, yep, that right there will uh -huh. do. You just happened to see it. Yeah, and I thought, yeah, she'll like that. Yeah, I love it. Love it. I love it. I love that we've got several different little sitting areas. Mm -hmm. I've not been able to sit much this year. My bench that we got from... Uh, Josh last year that was a favorite place to sit all like the rest of all last summer this year I've not got to sit there very much not got to spend as much time out here, but I Actually put this thing right there to begin with but it, the trees in the way of it I rocking. Love it gliding, so yeah. I put all that back and brought it over here yeah. You can move it anywhere you want to go with it. I just this look like a good place for now. Oh, it's yeah. kind of shady. Yeah, it's nice out here I'm here with the chickens. Mm -hmm. Turned out to be a perfect day though to do some heavy lifting out here because it's been cool today. Yeah. It's, it's been nice. It's fixing to get wet. Yeah. The last few days has been on the cool, not cool, not airish, but just cooler than mm -hmm. what we'd had. Kind of unusually, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So today seemed like the perfect day for that. Yeah. For doing the mowing and the weed eating. Usually we're out here just like about to die from heat when we're doing it. So it wasn't that bad this morning, especially when it was still cloudy over and it was kind of nice. Yeah, I'm one of those that, I'm not gonna wait for the yard to dry so that the, uh, you know, don't clump up or all that. Yeah. I'm going to get out there at daylight when it's the coolest it's going to be and that's when I'm going to do yeah. it and whatever it looks like is what it looks like. Yeah, we don't worry about, you can already yeah. tell that, we don't worry about how the yeah. lawn looks. No. Nah. Yeah. And we had big hopes uh, of getting rid of the uh, the lawn, getting rid of the yard, getting rid of the grass, putting more beds on, but uh, that didn't happen. We our, our main goal was to do those two banks and put beds on them, but this series of events happened where Thomas was going to clear the bank out for us, and then we you know, suddenly thought, well, what if he scooped out some places and we put beds there? So we did end up with more beds, just not in the yard. Didn't get rid of the grass. Um, Matt's boss at work sadly passed away from cancer, so that was another thing. Matt was having to do more while he was sick and then since he's uh, passed away Matt's now in charge so that just added a, a whole lot more responsibility so that was another thing all through the because he didn't work even before Christmas did he 
Uh, he went out in yeah. October of last year and never came yeah. back. So just things that you can't foresee when you're making all those plans. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's fine because we, I mean, you know, it doesn't take long to mow it. And we did end up with those great beds on the bank. And we could never have done that without a machine. No. No, so I had to take take advantage of Thomas and his machine while they were here. So mm -hmm. I think those are really going to be good. Oh, yeah. I think good. so. We still have to figure out the if we're going to put steps up and down. We we will eventually, but we another thing that we've not got done this year for sure. Yeah, it's not going to happen this year. No, but thankfully we're both spry enough that we can scurry up and down mm -hmm. and really the only two there's just like about three that you have to scurry kind of up and down the others you can go at a slant and kind of walk straight out to mm -hmm. just these first three probably build one thing of steps and then go once you go up the steps then go to that's probably what i'll end up doing yeah, is that just whenever to, i get time yeah so but before then, I've got fishing to do yeah. at some point. Yeah, and after fishing, I'll be deer hunting. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. I'm sure you can squeeze in some. Remember, I offered to buy you floodlights so you could work at night. Well, how nice of you. <laughs> that could be a good Father's Day present. Uh, yeah, floodlights <laughs> so I can work in the dark. I gotta no. sleep sometimes. I know, just kidding. We enjoy our sleep too much to work at night. Yeah, I can't make it much past 9 o'clock at night. No. Well, we work too hard during the day. But I'm up early. Yeah. Real, both of us are. Yeah. Real early. Yeah, I've been getting up. I get up early anyway, but I've been getting up even earlier while we've tried to help out a lot with Miss Cindy just because it gives me, if I get one more extra hour, then I can do stuff I need to do mm -hmm. here before I go to check on her and make sure everything's okay or do whatever she needs doing so so yeah we've both been kind of doing the early shift yeah. of course you do it anyway i do it on my days off just yeah. because i wake up early and i get up i don't yeah. matt says he don't want to waste any of his days off sleeping that's right that's exactly right yeah, he'd rather be up and about he got a whole lot of time off i'm gonna get up way before daylight and enjoy it yeah Enjoy every second of it. Mm -hmm. Kind of thought this morning I'd go be on the creek at daylight and fish an hour or two maybe before we started all this work. But then I looked at the radar and seen how close the rain was and how much work we had to do, so I didn't go. Yeah. So I was doing the responsible thing. You're always doing the <laughs> responsible thing. You're Mr. Responsibility. You always do it. Always. You might go this evening if it, if it passes over. If it rains a whole lot, it'll muddy the creek up. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. i got to get my new toy out at some point. Yeah, Matt got a new, new toy. We'll have to show you. It's a kayak, but we'll have to make sure to do a video. Matt will have to do it though because I can't go with him to do that. You have to do the video too. Yeah, that might be difficult because <laughs> yeah. I'm not good at that. Well, you could do it, yeah. Could wear Katie's GoPro. Yeah, you could do that. That way that would be a video documentation of the crash. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> there'll be no crash. Hopefully. Here's, we've got poplars here's part of a tulip poplars mm -hmm. bloom falling on us up there mm -hmm. well we appreciate you visiting with us today while we kind of got everything in order so that we can just start out planting hopefully Corey will be here that day to help us and katie will help if she's here if she's able depending on her workload and we'll just push through and our dream is that we get it all planted in one day oh, yeah. i think we will because we've got all the tomatoes and peppers in so it'll just be planting the seeds all that direct sowing from cucumbers to melon squash beans, beans peas all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff I'm sure I've left out something. The winter squash, the okra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If 
you help me remember, we should try. Every year, people tell me to do this, and I never remember until it's that day, and then I'm like, I just we just got to plant it. But the, if you soak your okra overnight, mm -hmm. it'll come up faster. Yeah, when they do it, because sometimes yeah. it's two weeks coming yeah, up. Yeah, before it comes up, it's got a, it's a hard little hard little seed. So I'm surprised some of the little um, seeds me and Katie planted are up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The flowers, they're just flowers. They're not any kind of vegetable, but uh, it'll make the garden pretty, though, and help the bees, and maybe the marigolds will ward off the bugs. We hear that, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we grow marigolds every year, but we have I have planted way more of them this year than usual. Mm -hmm. But that was one of the flowers that Granny always grew, so I like to, like to grow it. So, as always, we do appreciate you stopping by to visit with us and help us celebrate Appalachia. Sleepy. Not really. I'm um, getting hungry. I'm getting hungry. Yeah. What you want to eat? Well, the sandwich run out. What you want? There's some leftover baked ziti. Eat that. Make you a sandwich. I've seen some mm -hmm. ham. I don't know whose it is. Ham and cheese. It's in my house. It's mine. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> whose it is. Corey's or I don't know. It's Katie's bought some. Yeah. Make you that? Yeah, probably. There's a little bit of chicken soup left. I think I want a sandwich. Have a piece of meat. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh, and I made one extra little hamburger last night, so yeah. I could eat it. Yeah. I might eat that. Yeah. A hamburger. It was just, we were using, me and Corey were using the rest of the meat, and I said, let's let me just make this, and somebody will eat it tomorrow. We're well, making for everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't know what we're going to have tonight. Do you? I had a hamburger for lunch yesterday, too. You've been hamburgered out. This, we, we cut these at work. Deer, deer, deer burgers. Deer burgers, yeah. yeah. We had deer burgers and crinkle french fries and pork and beans. Sounds pretty good. And I found, I was meaning to tell you, I guess I could go over and get them if I get time, but when you get groceries, do you go to save them up? Well, sometimes. They have a new Debbie in there that is just exquisitely oh good. What kind is it? It's peanut butter. Huh. And it looks just like a, I don't know what it's called, but it looks like a, a large oatmeal Debbie, yeah. but it's filled with peanut butter. And it's good. Did y'all see them in there and get some? We seen them. Chad had already eaten some. Yeah. And we bought a box, and when we sat down to eat lunch, we ate lunch, and then we opened that box and we ate every one of them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Every single one of them at, at one time. Yeah. Well, there was a bunch of you though. Yeah, but still, those yeah. are, uh, my goodness, them things is good. Oh gosh. We got, I gotta have some of them. Remember how Katie used to like little Debbies? Yeah. She won't even eat them now. I won't even look at them. And I don't eat them much. No. But I don't my, buy them. Yeah. But so. I'm telling you right now, them's good. Yeah. I used to get on to Daddy and uh, Granny, mostly Daddy, for letting Corey and Katie eat the little Debbies. He said, one time he said, why, your body will just take what it needs out yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they ain't nothing in it. It needs is no, the problem. No, that's the problem, <laughs> it's yeah. just the sugar. Yeah, your body will just <laughs> take what it needs. Yeah. Yeah, and it ain't, it ain't good to eat, but, but that, that tastes good. Yeah. I don't know what my, I used to, I don't, like you said, we don't eat Debbie's now, but I used to, when I was in high school, my favorite was fudge rounds. Oh, yeah, I like really liked fudge rounds. Yeah. And I liked fudge rounds. I remember them playing jokes on each other at church, like, I don't remember, it wasn't Daddy, but I don't remember if it was Elsie or who, some of the men, they get each other little Debbie's and put mm -hmm. it under the... Now they make the little yeah. Swiss rolls that's got strawberry filling in them yeah. instead of the white filling. Yeah, the too. Satterfield sent They're us good. home with those. They for did. You. Yeah. And I've you. never seen them. Yeah, I've never seen them. But ever. since then, I've seen them when yeah. we go get groceries for work. I've seen them in yeah. there and we bought, bought some of them. They used to have, remember that one? Like Katie liked the chocolate jelly ones. Remember them? Yeah. But then Corey liked, remember for a time, they had ones that had pineapple. Right. And they yeah, quit, and they quit making, making them. them but those are really good. Yeah. What's she doing? I don't know what she's doing. I don't know. 
I guess we better go see what she's doing now. Find out. Yep. She might be like a little baby. She may be into something she ain't supposed to be. I think she's calling us. Mama, Daddy. Yes? Yeah? What are you doing? Okay. It's all right. I thought Daddy said he didn't want it. It's all right. Did Miss Cindy eat anything? Maybe she'll make some. I'll get her to fix that chicken soup up. Maybe she'll eat it. It's all right. No, it's fine. He was going to eat a, I bet there was one extra little hamburger from yesterday. We need to figure out what we're going to do for supper, though.